This is music and this is A Taste of Mary's Blood. Welcome to the third and, for now at least, last episode of A Taste of Mary's Blood, uh, a series of videos where I kind of explore the uh, CDs that I have in my collection by the Japanese power metal band Mary's Blood. The reason why it's the third and last episode is that I only have three CDs by them, and what we're going to look at today is this one here, the self-titled um, album from... 2021 kind of the swan song because they decided to go on uh, an infinite hiatus maybe even call it a day uh, after this one was released uh, so that's a bit of a shame let's just first have a look at the uh, booklet and all that stuff so this is the front of the booklet just a kind of picture of the band uh, this is what the back looks like you got the lineup you got some credits and all that stuff and if we flip through the um, booklet, we got some lyrics, we got, you know, photos of the band members. So this is I, the singer, uh, I am actually not sure still how to pronounce her name, but it's spelled like I in English, at least. Uh, very unique singer. She can do some really awesome rock building, but uh, a lot of her sort of singing style in this album is more almost like crooning in a way. And it's very interesting. Uh, here you have Saki, uh, the guitarist. Um, she is the queen of tasty guitar solos. Some of her solos are wild and crazy, and some of them are very melodic. And a lot of them are just, you know, very tasty. So that's why I call her the queen of tasty guitar solos. Got some more lyrics. The lyrics are written in Japanese, by the way. Here you have uh, Rio, the bass player, a rock solid uh, bass player. As far as I remember, she's more into punk music, actually. And here you have uh, the drummer, Mari. She's just a beast behind the kit. She's a great drummer. Uh, so yeah, that's what the booklet looks like. Now, because I have the JPU Records version, I have an extra booklet with uh, English translations of the um, lyrics and also with sort of transliterations of the Japanese into uh, Latin letters. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the disc itself looks like this. It actually looks pretty cool. And this is what the back looks like. And if you're really, really, really nerdy, this is what, you know, the uh, other side of the back cover, what that looks like. So, with sort of the physical collector's nerdery aspect out of the way, let's talk a bit about the songs on this album. Uh, it starts out with a just an instrumental introduction called uh, Last Daybreak, and that's a really ominous and almost prophetic title. Kind of sad, seeing that this is the swan song, but that's a melancholic and very dark um, instrumental it has some kind of symphonic uh, vibes to it and i don't know why but it kind of reminds me of some of the old heroes might and magic uh, computer games um, some of the kind of you have like cities and you fight with whatever but some of the cities have like their own soundtracks and some of them have soundtracks that kind of remind me a bit of of last daybreak for some reason the first real kind of song on this album is called without a crown it's an aggressive song it's a heavy song it's a modern metal song and i would say it even has some power thrash elements to it to be perfectly honest uh, the drumming is thrashy there are some groove uh, elements as well and the chorus is, is pretty cool uh, and there's a nice breakdown as well that has a great, tasty guitar solo. Without a Crown is a great song, to be honest. It's followed by a song called Blow Up Your Fire. Uh, it's a, a kind of... It kind of has a... I mean, it doesn't sound like that at all, but it kind of has a bit of a vibe that reminds me of, of kind of 
pain killer era Judas Priest. Uh, so they might be inspired by Painkiller. I mean, op why not? It's a great album. Uh, this one has a really nice chorus line, and there's some really cool uh, guitar harmonies. And there's a, another breakdown in this one with some cool guitar harmonies. And again, just another really tasty guitar solo from the queen of tasty guitar solos, uh, Saki, Her Majesty. Uh, it's just a very enjoyable song. I like that one too. Uh, Blow up your fire. It's followed by a song called Joker. Uh, it's a mid-tempo song this time. It's still kind of heavy. Um, and this is where it has uh, the singing style by uh, I is is pre it is crooning. I mean, um, very interesting. Uh, really, just really interesting to listen to. Her crooning singing style, it kind of fits the song very well, so that's great. Uh, here you have another just nice tasty guitar solo. Uh, and you have some kind of, of, of folky um, guitar leads going on as well. Very interesting. And then just a really cool, just distorted in your face, uh, distorted bass by Rio. So Joker, another really nice song. Uh, it's followed by a song called Be Myself. And... This is a very Japanese sounding kind of J power metal kind of song. When you hear a lot of Japanese or listen to a lot of Japanese power metal, uh, you kind of start uh, identifying some, some uh, kind of features that seem to be characteristic of the Japanese power metal and the Japanese metal scene that you don't hear that much in American or European or, you know, other, um, shall we say, uh, traditions in power metal and I think it might have to do with the scales they use might have to do with the sort of maybe vocal melodies they use that there's probably an influence from you know the Japanese music hinterland in general and this just makes it very interesting for me to listen to as someone who's comes from a different culture um, so it, I mean this is in, in a very positive sense that it, it sounds very Japanese uh, it's epic it has just larger than life vocal melodies you know that are just sing along friendly as hell even if you don't speak japanese you can sing along um and i the singer or i i'm sorry i don't really i'm not sure how to pronounce her name so i'm just going to keep going with the i uh, but she has some really nice soft falsettos that she hits in uh this song uh that that fits the song very well and i really like that uh those soft falsettos that's really nice it's a fun song it's uplifting and another song with a nice tasty melodic guitar solo it's followed by a kind of a, of a kind of a power ballad i would say maybe power metal power ballad if you know what i mean called umbrella uh, there seems to even be some mild influences from the Beatles here. And also, it's quite interesting, I do get a kind of a Mind Crime Empire era Queensryche kind of vibe as well, which I have no problem with because that's those are my two favorite Queensryche albums. Um, you have some, some, uh, some pretty nice and pleasant, actually, clean guitar figures going on. Um, the song becomes kind of epic and, and symphonic as it kind of progresses. And uh, it's actually a pretty cool song. Normally, I'm not a big fan of ballads, but, you know, if when they work for me, they really work for me. And Umbrella works for me as a ballad. So that's really nice. It's followed by another song called Ignite. That's kind of a modern metal song. It's quite heavy. It's quite groovy as well. It has almost kind of like a biker rock drive to it as well, which I think is interesting. Um, there's some nice vocal melodies in it and some really, really awesome riffage. And again, another tasty guitar solo uh, by Her Majesty, uh, the queen of tasty guitar solos. Um, great stuff. Really nice song. I mean, Ignite kind of makes sense that it would have a biker rock feel to it or maybe kind of a you know, road trip kind of feel to it. This is a song that would be perfect for a long road trip. You could just listen to it. 
you know on repeat and you would never get tired of it i think uh it's followed by a song called uh, hunger that's a groovy song uh there's some you know, just great groovy riffage in it it's not necessarily groove metal but it's groovy uh the bass is heavy and distorted on this one as well another song with some really nice vocal melodies in it uh especially towards the middle uh and i guess it's kind of a chorus um because they're kind of repeated again towards the end so it's i guess it's a chorus but i really like the vocal melody in in, in what i perceive as the chorus and this one has one of uh, uh saki's chaotic uh solos so her, her trademark solos tasty trademark uh, tasty solos but also another trademark solo is kind of like really wild and chaotic solos and you get one of those here which is really nice um so there you go uh, and then you have a song called let me out super catchy uh, modern metal song it has some pop um, elements in it uh especially in the introduction and the the uh, the vocal melody could be the chorus of a pop song too but now it's the chorus of a metal song and in the chorus the vocal melody is just awesome it's catchy it's sing-along friendly that's might be my favorite song on the album just because it's so sing-along friendly and catchy and melodic really like it uh, some some great vocal melodies in this song in general like in the chorus but also in general and again you got some just nice lead guitar work uh, from saki so let me out might be my favorite song from this album uh followed by a song called mad lady yeah mad lady i just had to double check um this is another modern metal song it's another song that has some uh, groovy elements which is really nice um here you got some rock belting from i she has a very uh kind of recognizable rock belting style too and it's nice to hear that um I like her sort of more crooning style of singing, to be sure, but I, I really like it when she rips out a face melter, uh, just belting out aggressive rock uh, vocals. I really like it when she does that. And, and because she does a lot of that kind of crooning singing style, whenever she does belt out a face melter on this album, it just really works. You know, it has an extra punch to it. Really nice. Uh, this one has some uh, great riffage in it and just another face ripping chaotic wild uh, guitar solo by Saki and then it's followed by a song called Starlight not the Halloween song this is another very Japanese sort of J power metal sounding song and remember I mean that as actually as a compliment here because I really like that very Japanese sounding style of metal uh, great guitar work in this one too uh nice simple riffage which i appreciate uh there are some pop elements to it as well and that's fine i don't i don't mind some pop in my metal music i don't like contemporary modern pop music but i don't have a problem with elements from pop music in metal music you know what i mean uh, some nice vocal melodies in that one too uh you have another just over the top guitar solo which works and it's kind of nice to get an over-the-top guitar solo by Saki on the very last song on maybe the very last uh, Mary's Blood album. I don't know if there's any news from uh, from their camp, whether they're going to get back together or whatever. Uh, but yeah, overall, this is a very, very nice uh, album. It's a, a great kind of swan song if they decide to just call it a day completely. It's a bang to go out on, to be certain uh the guitar tone on this album in general is very heavy it has a very modern heavy sound to it uh and there's some just really tasty guitar solos uh and i feel like you know while Sh saki one of her trademark style solos the crazy wild chaotic solos um she does focus a bit more on the tasty stuff and the melodic guitar solos on this one um and I like melodic and tasty guitar solos. I also like chaotic guitar solo. So it's a win-win for me. Um, 
The drumming is great. I haven't said that much about the drumming in the individual songs, but it's great. I mean, it's it's hard to because I would just say great drumming, great drumming, great drumming in all songs because because uh, mighty fantastic drummer. And if you watch her play, she always has this almost Zen smile, which is really interesting. She does have a YouTube channel. She did a cover version of Slaughter of the Soul by um, by uh, at the gates. And I've never seen a drummer play that song looking more Zen. Uh, so she's kind of like from the Gene Hopeland school of just looking like it's the easiest thing in the world to do. That's how great a drummer she is. Uh, the songs have just great dynamics just across the songs. You know, the entire album, they relate sort of the way the songs relate to one another, ups and downs, intensity, uh, uh, chillness, great dynamic across the album. But each song also has just some nice compositional dynamics to to it which i really appreciate uh, as i said there's more crooning less belting from i on this album but it works very well uh, and it's overall it's just a very very enjoyable album it's it's a very good modern power metal album but also it has kind of a melancholic feel to it and kind of a sad vibe to it and maybe it's just because it's so far might be the last album by this band ever but yeah those are my thoughts on mary's blood's self-titled album overall very enjoyable modern japanese power metal uh, do check it out if you like female fronted metal if you like power metal if you like j-rock and j-metal um, and also i think if you're just into heavy metal in general do check out mary's blood it's a great band was a great band maybe great album in any case thanks for watching